Hey, how's it going? Let's pick it up in Romans chapter 2 and read verses 1 through 16. You therefore have no excuse, you who pass judgment on someone else. For at whatever point you judge the other, you are condemning yourself, because you who pass judgment do the same things. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you, a mere man, pass judgment on them and yet do the same things, do you think you will escape God's judgment? Or do you show contempt for the riches of His kindness, tolerance, and patience, not realizing that God's kindness leads you towards repentance? But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath, when His righteous judgment will be revealed. God will give to each person according to what He has done. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For God does not show favoritism. All who sin apart from the law will also perish apart from the law, and all who sin under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. Indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law, they are a law for themselves, even though they do not have the law. Since they show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, their consciences are also bearing witness, and their thoughts now accusing, now even defending them. This will take place on the day when God will judge men's secrets through Jesus Christ, as my gospel declares. So let's go back to verse 1 and 1 through 4, really, really good stuff in there talking about judgment. Um, we really don't want to be judging other people, especially when it's of a, you know, a hypocritical nature. Um, if we're judging people and we're doing those same things ourselves, that is really not something that God looks favorably upon. And that's something that Jesus talks about in Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. So let's read Let's read those verses. It says, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And we hear these same kind of things in Romans chapter 2, uh, verse 5. It says, But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath when his righteous judgment will be revealed. And so we're seeing this, this same kind of a concept, like how much you judge, you will be judged. Like this is something we want to be really, really careful about. So if we're judging others and we're constantly in this mindset where we're nitpicking, you know, the kind of thing where in Matthew it talks about, you know, looking at a speck in somebody's eye when you have a plank in your own eye, let's look inwardly more so than we look outwardly in the sense of how we judge. You know, we want to be discerning of our ourselves and improving our own behavior, but let's be very careful when we're looking at somebody else and judging them. Very, very important. Um, then if we look at verse 6, God will give to each person according to what he has done. And then it talks about if you've done good, then you'll get good things. If you've done bad, you'll get bad things. The good thing and the comforting thing we can learn from this is that God will even things out in heaven. When we reach judgment day, God is going to make things right. So that means if you've done something good, he'll reward you for that. And also, if you've been wronged, we can know we can leave those things to God. We don't have to pursue, you know, revenge or vengeance ourselves because God is going to make those things right on judgment day. In verse 11, for God does not show favoritism. Hallelujah for that. That is a good thing. Verse 13, really another, uh, another big one I want to highlight. For it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. Now, this is really, really important because it doesn't really matter how many sermons you sit through and you think are really good, how many 
video devotions you sit through and you you kind of enjoy. It's about hearing the word and then actually doing it. So like when we were reading Romans chapter one and we're reading all this list of, of bad things, like we want to go ahead and avo actually avoid those. And when we read Romans chapter uh, one, uh, Romans chapter two, verses one through four, we want to go ahead and not judge people. It doesn't matter if we read these verses really. What matters is, is if we actually go out and judge people. So I would challenge you today just as you go throughout your day, go throughout your week, like this is a really, really important thing. Like if we're judging other people, that also probably means that we're not loving people how we should, which is really, really important at the top of the list as far as what God commands us to do. And so what we want to do then is follow verse 13. This is so important and not just hear these things, but we want to actually love people. We want to actually not judge people. We want to actually avoid being a hypocrite, that sort of a thing. So let's actually pursue that. Like, let's actually do this because that is a super, super important thing. So I think that's how we can apply this is like, let's actually do this today. If you've sent some, some moment during your day, whether you're at work, whether you're with your family and you notice yourself wanting to judge other people, let's notice that and let's go ahead and stop that and let's try to ask God to give us love for that person, whoever we're judging, and then let's go ahead and pray for that person as well, um, that God would be with them and that God would be with us so that we would not judge them as well. So let's pray and let's pray for this. Lord God, we just thank you. We thank you for your word and we just pray that you would help us to go through the day and not judge other people, Lord God because we need your help with that. We pray that instead of judgment, instead of being a hypocrite, Lord God, we pray that you would replace that with just pure love for other people. We just pray for that in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.